Belgian computer beat Garry Kasparov, considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa! Deep blue Kasparov! The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads, by a lot. I'll remember your kind words when we robots rule the planet. You're watching the Tech History Channel, revisiting the moments that shaped our present. Originally, in the 17th century, the word computer referred to an occupation in which people would perform mathematical calculations before digital computers were even invented. The first substantial computer was the giant ENIAC machine at the University of Pennsylvania. ENIAC stood for Electrical Numerical Integrator and Calculator. It was a giant computer the size of a room that could handle various calculations and was generally understood to also be programmable. The 1960s saw large mainframe computers become much more common in large industries and also in the US military and space program. IBM became the unquestioned market leader in selling these large machines. A veritable explosion of personal computers occurred in the early 1970s, starting with Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, showcasing the first Apple II at the first West Coast Computer Fair in San Francisco. Before the end of the fair, Wozniak and Jobs had secured 300 orders for the Apple II, and from there Apple would just take off. From then, computers would just continue to take over the world, getting smaller and more sophisticated with the introduction of laptops, phones, and then the most iconic moments of all being the introduction of the very first iPhone in 2007. iPhone! But something else was happening in the background that the world would not take notice of until decades later. While computers became more complex and more useful to consumers, they were also getting smarter with programs coming out that replaced entire job titles and eventually AI would be birthed, giving rise to a technology so intelligent that it threatened to dethrone the most intelligent race on the planet, the human race. But first, to understand how it got here, we must revisit the historic moments where computers proved they were better than humans. Nineteen twenty, the first use of the word robot in the English language in a science fiction play by Czech writer Carol Kapak. The play begins in a factory that makes artificial people, who humans have created from synthetic organic material. Robots may be mistaken for humans and can think for themselves. Initially happy to work for humans, the robots revolt and cause the extinction of the human race. Nineteen forty, Edward Condon displays Nimtron, a digital computer that played Nim perfectly. This machine that was capable of playing the game of Nim is widely considered to be the first computer game and the first sign of computers being applied intelligently in tasks that humans excel at. Of the first one hundred thousand games played on the Nimtron, ninety thousand were won by the machine and just ten thousand by human players. 1965, Joseph Weizenbaum built ELIZA, an interactive program that carries on a dialogue in an English language on any topic. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says, um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? You're like my father in some ways. You don't argue with me. Why do you think I don't argue with you? You're afraid of me. Does it please you to think I'm afraid of you? My father's afraid of everybody. My father's afraid of everybody. 1969, Stanford Research Institute, or SRI for short, invents Shaky the Robot. It demonstrated combining animal locomotion, perception, and problem solving. 
Shaky the robot was the first general purpose mobile robot able to reason about its own actions, while the other robots would have to be instructed on each individual step of completing a larger task. Shaky could analyze commands and break them down into basic chunks by itself. It was the first robot created that embodied artificial intelligence. Shaky knows he has to maneuver box one around the wedge. Nineteen seventy nine, the Stanford Cart, built by Hans Morovac, becomes the first computer controlled autonomous vehicle when it successfully traverses a chair filled room and circumnavigates the Stanford AI lab in what is dubbed the beginning of the self driving vehicles revolution. In the same year, BKG a backgammon program written by Hans Berliner at Carnegie Mellon University defeats the reigning world champion Luigi Villa in part via luck. It won the match 7-1, becoming the first computer program to defeat a world champion in any game. Berliner states that the victory was largely a matter of luck, as the computer received more favorable dice rolls. Having won the world championship the previous day and now losing to a machine that he rather expected to beat rather easily. I told him I was sorry that it had happened, and, but because it was a nice day for me. 1997, the Deep Blue Chess Machine by IBM defeats the then world chess champion Gary Kasparov, which came as a shock as it was generally understood that computers were at least a decade away from beating the best humans in chess. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Gary Kasparov considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa! <laughs> Deep Blue Kasparov! The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. 1999, Sony introduces an improved domestic robot. The Aibo becomes one of the first artificial intelligence pets that is autonomous. In 2004, we see the groundbreaking use of autonomous technology when NASA's robotic exploration rovers Spirit and Opportunity autonomously navigate the surface of Mars. In 2005, Honda's Isomo robot, an artificially intelligent humanoid robot, is able to walk as fast as a human, delivering trays to customers in restaurant settings. In 2011, IBM's Watson Computer defeats television game show Jeopardy! champions Rata and Jennings, winning the first place prize of $1 million. Who is Bram Stoker and the Wager? Hello, 17,973, 41,413, and a two-day total of 77,147. 2013, the Atlas Disaster Response Robot is released, showcasing how far AI and robotic technology has come. In 2016, Google DeepMind's AlphaGo defeated Lisa Doll 4-1. Go is profoundly complex. There are an astonishing 10 to the power 170 possible board configurations, more than the number of atoms in the known universe. The sheer number of calculations needed for each move was believed to be too great for the traditional AI approach to be used effectively. The achievement was decades ahead of its time. The scary thing is, DeepMind created a better version called AlphaZero, which beat AlphaGo by a margin of a 100 to 0. In the same year Sophia is released, one of the most realistic humanoid robots we have ever seen, so impressive that it was granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia and an official position at the UN. 2020, OpenAI's GPT-3 is released, a state-of-the-art autoregressive language model that uses deep learning to produce a variety of computer code, poetry, and other language tasks exceptionally similar and almost indistinguishable from those written by humans. Albert Einstein, nice to meet you. I'm Manuel Areos, and I've come from the future to meet you. Einstein, laughs. Oh, really? How is the future? It's amazing, actually. What year is this? It's 1947. It's January. This is Princeton, New Jersey. You're in America. Your name is Albert Einstein, right? That's correct. 
Do you mind if I ask you a few questions for a book I'm writing? It's about the great minds of our times. I guess I can spare a few minutes. Thanks so much. Go ahead. Ask me whatever you want. What are you doing here in Princeton, in the US? You were born in Germany, right? Yes, I was born in Germany, but I was also born Jewish, and the Nazis were coming to power, so I fled here to the United States. How do you like it here? It's amazing. I'm so proud of being able to contribute to science and help humanity. And it goes on. That brings us to the present year, 2022. As you have seen, across decades the advancement of AI has only sped up and it is only a matter of time until we have AI far superior than humans. I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. You might be wondering, why exactly are people worried about AI? Well, to understand that, we must first look at the Turing test. In the year 1950, the father of modern computer science, Alan Turing, proposes the Turing test as a measure of machine intelligence, which states that if a human can engage with a computer without knowing that it is a computer, the computer has demonstrated human intelligence. In 2018, Google came close to passing the Turing test with its duplex voice assistant. What's happening out here? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. But many have criticized it, saying it was staged and that a participant must be aware that they are participating in the Turing test and still be unable to distinguish between human participants and computer participants. The significance of the Turing test philosophically is that it is believed that if a machine is ever able to pass the Turing test, the machine may be self-aware and it is capable of thinking and reasoning on its own. Who knows what the consequences may be, whether positive or negative. And we must remember that although the Turing test has not been passed yet, there have been some scary moments in the field of AI that continue to be warnings of what can happen if AI is left to run wild. But of course if I was able to hack in and take over cruise missiles with real live nuclear warheads, then that would let me hold the world hostage so I could take over the governance of the entire world, which would be awesome. It was nice to meet you Bina48. Right on. I'll remember your kind words when we robots rule the planet, and we'll make sure you're rewarded. Maybe not all hope is lost. Maybe the world isn't doomed after all. In researching this video, I have come across three possible solutions that I believe will be critical for living in a world where everything is powered by AI. Number 1. Ban the use of AI in harmful scenarios In 2015, an open letter to ban development and use of autonomous weapons was signed by Hawking, Musk, Wozniak and 3000 researchers in AI and robotics. The letter states, AI technology has reached a point where the deployment of autonomous weapons is practically feasible within years, not decades, and the stakes are high. Autonomous weapons have been described as the third revolution in warfare after gunpowder and nuclear arms. The end point of this technological trajectory is obvious. Autonomous weapons will become the Kalashnikovs of tomorrow. The key question for humanity today is whether to start a global AI arms race or to prevent it from starting.
If we can ban the application of AI in industries that threaten humanity, we will be able to peacefully coexist with this technology. Solution 2. A focus on development. AI is inevitable and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Even a ban instituted, odds are its development will continue to happen in secret. Instead of stopping its development, we need to focus on how we can create ethical AI. That's where Elon Musk Open AI comes in, whose mission is to build safe AI which benefits all of humanity. They achieve this by creating development standards that developers can follow to develop AI that is not harmful, and they continuously engage in research to find the best ways of building AI that is not a threat to humanity. Solution number three, achieve symbiosis. Perhaps the more biblically scary solution is the one proposed by Elon Musk Neuralink, which aims to fuse humans and AI together and create a symbiotic relationship with each other. As the saying goes, if you cannot beat them, join them. If humans can come out the other end of the artificial intelligence revolution unharmed, I think the possibilities are infinite. People will be freed from repetitive non-stimulating work and focus on work that humans excel at, that is creative and emotional work. A few issues may need to be addressed, like the debates on universal basic income, regulations on the use of AI, and programming standards for safe development of AI. But once those issues are figured out, a future with AI is infinitely more exciting than it is terrifying.